Hello, kidney warriors. James here from Dadvice TV, your online kidney health coach, and this is Dadvice TV Live. And I'd like to take a moment and welcome everyone who's new. Glad to have you here. Don't forget to subscribe over on YouTube. Hit that little bell icon, and every time there's a live video scheduled and it goes live, you'll get a notification. That way you won't miss all this great information that will help you learn more about kidney disease and nutrition so that you can manage your kidney disease better and hopefully improve your quality of life. And if you are new, let me quickly introduce myself. My name's James and I'm a kidney patient. I was diagnosed about two and a half years ago with stage five kidney failure. And since then, I have focused on my health and my diet. I stopped doing things that were bad. I gave up soda. I gave up highly processed food and fast food and all that stuff and I've gotten healthier. Along with getting healthier, my kidney function has improved also. Now my kidneys, they're still shot, they're still bad, but I've reduced the burden that I place on them. That way, they kind of get along a little bit better and they're able to better keep up with me so that I don't have a single symptom. Now tonight, we're gonna kind of go back to kind of some of the basics. What all do the kidneys do? And it's funny, I was just talking to my wife a couple days ago about kidneys, because I went to my doctor and he said, James, there's some more things you gotta do. You gotta focus on that diet, focus on that exercise, lose some weight, take care of this and that. And I was talking to her and I realized, wow, a lot of people, you know, including my wife, didn't realize all the things your kidneys do. They do so much and are so important to helping us kind of have our energy and get around and do all the things we want to do. Now to help talk about that, back here, because it's Tuesday, every Tuesday, you know who's here, renal dietitian Jen Hernandez. Let's go ahead and say hello, Jen. Hey, Jen. Hey, James. Hey, everybody. Happy to be back again on this lovely Tuesday evening. Now that we have more sunlight, I actually get to have my window open and it's so nice having the sun and uh, I'm hoping it doesn't get too dark in here by the end of our, by the end of our chat tonight. <laughs> <laughs> now, for those that are new, tell them what a renal dietitian is and uh, how yeah. they can learn more because they're going to hear all sorts of cool stuff and they're going to want to learn more. Yeah, so I am a registered dietitian in the United States. I have gone through a lot of schooling, education, internship, passed my national dietitian exam here in the US. And then after I started working as a dietitian, I very soon after started working, went into dialysis because I, to be honest, was terrified of the renal diet as a dietitian. I was terrified of it. I thought it was such a complex diet and for somebody to have kidney failure, to somebody for somebody to have kidney disease, it was a lot of responsibility and I felt terrified, but also up to the challenge. And I wanted to become really knowledgeable of the renal diet. I wanted to be able to help my dialysis patients and then also my CKD patients, those with earlier stages of CKD, do everything they possibly can to prevent dialysis and those on dialysis, everything they can to feel good about how they feel while on dialysis. So that's what I've been doing. And for the past several years, I've had plant powered kidneys, which is my private practice. I see everybody in the United States online in a virtual setting, just like this. And we work together to help them make changes to their diet to make sure that they're doing everything they possibly can to keep their kidneys functioning. So that is what I do now. I also run the course Plant Powered Kidneys, which you gotta stay tuned in these upcoming weeks. I don't wanna give away too much, but I'll just say, if you're interested in joining hundreds of other Plant Powered Kidney Warriors to learn the fundamentals, we go through six weeks of nutrition information really getting into those fundamentals of what you should be paying attention to 
and why you should be paying attention to it and what you can do with these fundamentals in six weeks of the Plant Powered Kidneys course. So if you're interested, you can go to my website, plantpoweredkidneys.com uh, slash course, and you can take a look there, get on the wait list because those on the wait list are going to be the very first people who get that special announcement. That registration is open and they will also be given options for some special offers. So if you wanna be on that wait list, go to plantpoweredkidneys.com slash course, and you can find details there. If you're looking for support in the meantime, if you're looking for more help and guidance and motivation and encouragement, I highly, highly recommend you join our Facebook group, which is Plant Powered Kidneys as well. And we have a lot of members that are very positive, motivating, uplifting, supportive, and will provide ideas for you on cooking plant-based with the renal diet. So I really hope that you will join that group because this is a free private group on Facebook that you can connect with so many other people. Some of them are students from the course. Some of them are my private clients. Uh, some of them I have never talked with, but have been able to communicate in the group. So if you're looking for a supportive group like that, I highly recommend our Facebook group. And uh, we do have some other offers on the website, including the blog, something that we go through here each week as well. But you are free to go check that out at the website at plantpoweredkidneys.com. Awesome. And for those of you who have not joined Jen's Plant Powered Kidneys Facebook group, it is awesome. It's free. It's great information, very positive. If any of those scammers get in there trying to push some kind of kidney solution or kidney cure or something like that, boom, we kick them out of there. So there's mm -hmm. lots of great information, great support, and fantastic recipe ideas. Because for all of us with kidney disease, figuring out what to eat and kind of keep some variety and a little bit of jazz in it is really important. Now tonight, we are here to talk about why your kidneys are important. And let's start, Jen, with what are the kidneys? So the kidneys are organs. They're technically, well, typically there's two, but many people have just one kidney. And for those that have one kidney, you can live a totally normal life with really no changes that are necessary if your kidney is doing well and functioning. But the kidneys are about the size of your fist. So you can take your you can take your hands and shape them here like me in a fist. And then they're back here. They're on your lower back. And they're right kind of a little bit under the rib cage, around the hip bones, in that space there. So they're in the lower back. And that is where they are working 24-7, 365 days a year, all the time, non-stop to take care of your bodies. So this is your filtering system, but we're going to go into all the different features. And uh, just to really quickly say the reason why we're talking more about why kidneys are important and what they're doing is because oftentimes I find that speaking with clients, speaking with people in the course, that we don't always realize what we're protecting we are thinking more about what we're avoiding. So in many cases, avoiding dialysis, avoiding full kidney failure, avoiding uh, or, or trying to delay transplant. So we want to talk about what the kidneys are doing so that you understand more of what you're protecting and you understand more of when you do have changes in your kidney function, in your labs, in your health, you're going to see how that connects more with the kidney. And, and that really kind of shows how it is engaged in more of our body rather than just James, as you said, uh, just making urine. Exactly. And you know, probably the first thing we all think about is that the kidneys filter. And I just posted a question in the comments. I asked everybody, how much do the kidneys filter on average in a day? It is a surprising amount. We'll get to that in just a few seconds. But how do the kidneys do the filtering? So it's the kidneys are a really, really interesting system. They have what are called nephrons, that these are the filtering units in the kidneys. Very, very tiny. And you can look up, uh, you can Google images of the kidney filtration system, things like that, to give to give you an exact image of what it looks like. But basically you have these nephrons, and in the nephrons you have the glomerulus. 
hard word to say, but this is the tiny grouping of blood vessels where the filtering process actually happens. So if we think about that filtration, a lot of people think right away, GFR, glomerular filtration rate. How much of a rate, how fast, uh, how much is the glomerulus filtering in our kidneys? And that's where the GFR comes from is what is the, what are the kidneys filtering? How much is being filtered? So this is something that is happening again, all the time, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. It doesn't matter what you're doing. Your kidneys are working. Your kidneys are filtering and taking care of what is coming in and going through your body. So this is where the kidneys will pull the extra fluids. So anything that your body doesn't need, it pulls that. It will pull the extra toxins. It will pull, or well, any toxins. It'll pull toxins. It'll pull waste, waste management. It will also pull vitamins and minerals, things that aren't being utilized, things that aren't really needed. Uh, we talked, we did a whole episode about the water soluble vitamins. These are the kinds that don't necessarily get stored. So extra amounts will come out through the kidneys. And this is how urine is formed. It's from this whole collection of all the stuff that's getting pulled. And the kidneys are the ones who decide what is kept and what is released. So that is what the kidneys are doing when it comes to filtering and continuing to function. So typically the GFR, the glomerular filtration rate is usually seen as 90 or normal. Now there is an adjustment for age. So there is an expected age related decline for glomerular filtration rate, GFR. It's not, it's usually seen Sometimes you might see your labs at like 60 or above is considered normal, where they're already kind of taking age into that factor. But when we look at the stages of CKD, that 60 to 90 area is the stage one, two for kidney disease. But again, we've talked about this before, to get an official diagnosis of kidney disease, you need to have this test done several times and you need to have that confirmed by a doctor. Just looking at your GFR and seeing maybe it's a 82 or a 78 or something like that, just seeing that number, that number doesn't automatically mean you have kidney failure. It could be normal kidney function. Now on the other side of the filtration rate, we're looking at a, a thing called hyperfiltration, which I talked a little bit about last week in the episode where we talked about Prowl. So that was a really big episode, a lot we covered there. Uh, but basically a diet that is higher in proteins can lead to what's called hyperfiltration, where the GFR looks higher because it's working harder. And the way that I uh, kind of interpret this for clients is thinking about putting your car, uh, revving the engine, how long can you rev that engine before the car, the engine is just like done. It's just woo, exhausted. I don't know too much about cars, but that's about the closest. I always seem to come up with car analogies. No, I that's mean, you a know good that, example. <laughs> and I'm a car person. It's like putting your car in first gear and keeping it there. When you drive, it's got a lot of power. Like, ree, ree. Yep. but you're going to wear it out really there quick. And problems are just around the corner. There you go. Yeah. So that's another, that's a great way to say it for the, for the car analogy. So this hyperfiltration can look like the GFR is improving. It can look like a, uh, a significant increase in your kidney function, where in fact is if you had a change in your diet in which you ate more protein, the body is just kind of working on overdrive to filter everything that's coming in. And studies have shown that this hyperfiltration is something that's considered a risk factor for heart disease, for mortality, for death, and it can also cause additional kidney function. So it's really important in looking at the labs. Again, you can't just look at the number and say, this is what it is. You need a medical professional to interpret that. And it's a much bigger picture than just seeing a change there. And, and you gotta understand why that change happened. Yeah, so I had asked the question in a day, in about 24 hours, how much does your kidneys filter? Ed guessed about 150 quarts, which is actually really, really close. Now you have the answer in liters. 
I do. I do. So we'll give a couple different answers. So it's in 24 hours, the kidneys function about 180 liters of blood. So in a day, 180. So, I mean, I guess in like the American, um, in the Americanized. (laughs) I I did um, the math. It's about 190 quarts in a day. I'm Ooh. thinking 90 of those uh, two liter bottles of soda that, you know, we're just, we see all the time and, you know, those are big bottles, right? They're like for the party size, but still 90 of those, like walk down the grocery aisle and count 90 of those two liter bottles. One day. That's one day. If you want to look into it in a smaller amount of time, it's about a half a cup of blood every minute, every minute, a half a cup of blood has been circulated and filtered by the kidneys. Yeah. Now those nephrons, when you see them, they kind of look like a, a whole glob of blood vessels and mm-hmm. things go in and out. You know, sometimes it reabsorbs some stuff mm-hmm. and when they get damaged, usually from you know, some, some type of damage or scar tissue. So we can't repair those little filters, but then that's what leads to chronic kidney disease is when we start damaging those yeah. filters. And yeah. if someone has that damage and they have chronic kidney disease, they have a significant amount of that damage, why is that a concern? Well, right away, you know, we talk about how it's filtering, it's balancing so many things in the body, not only wastes and toxins, but fluids, vitamins, and minerals. Like these are things that we know that are important to us, but our body is telling us how much we need and how much we don't need. So when we have the damage to the kidney filters where it's not able to balance this stuff out, that's where we end up getting this excess, this collection. So in many cases with the top concerns for renal diet, for kidney disease, we talk about fluids, protein, phosphorus, potassium, most of those things as CKD progresses, we talk about restriction, right? We talk about pulling back. And that's because there is a collection that's building up from that damage. So if you think about that damage, well, the top two causes of CKD are uh, diabetes and high blood pressure. So high blood pressure, it's going to damage these filters by essentially breaking them. This is like taking a garden hose and sticking your thumb over it and you increase all that pressure and all that pressure is going into these fine filters these delicate filters and taking care of of what's supposed to be taken care of but you're putting all this extra pressure it's all getting pushed in now with diabetes what happens is this uncontrolled blood sugars and these big blood sugar molecules are going in and they damage those very fine neuron or the the neurons that they damage the nerve tissues and the kidney function declines from that so these are the top two causes that are damaging the kidney function and that's what we see most often and this is not something in which the kidneys can repair in such a drastic way that we see a ton of improvement. There might be some things if caught early on that can be repaired, but it's not typically what we see with, this is a chronic illness. This is this is something that gradually goes from bad to worse in many cases, unfortunately. So this is why it's really, really important as soon as you know, as soon as you get that diagnosis to be proactive and be aggressive about what you can do in a safe and effective way method. And it's not those kidney cleansing vitamins. It's not the kidney flushes. It's not that kind of stuff. Those are, they're just looking to get your money. They're not looking to help you. They're looking for that payout. So be, be very, very cautious about when you're looking for, if it sounds too good to be true, it's probably too good to be true. There's a reason there. So just be really, really cautious with that kind of stuff. And, you know, James and I have both said it. If there was a really good solution, we would be screaming it. Every, exactly. Every I'd be behind we, it 100%. <laughs> oh, yeah. You guys would think, know it. Yeah. We would just, every week we'd come on and be like, do this, do this, take this, have this. That w- We would do that all the time. And we don't but, because there's but no But since thing. there is no solution... We're here Mm -hmm. saying, learn about kidney disease, learn about nutrition, work with the renal dietitian. Those are the things that you can do that could have an impact. Spending money on some bottle of uh, magic pills, they're not going to work. And actually, they could even hurt you. Right. Exactly. Exactly. 
And I get bombarded, guys, by so many of these people who have some kind of kidney flush, kidney restore. They're like, oh, mm -hmm. please sell them, push them. We'll give you money to promote them. It's crap. And right. I tell them, I say, this stuff doesn't work. I'm adding you to my list of kidney things to avoid, <laughs> which well, I have really on my TV. <laughs> It's, it's really good that you are filtering that and you're not just taking the paycheck because there are people and you guys have hey, seen them. There I'm are the people patient that will too. That. Yeah, <laughs> so. exactly. Exactly. Yeah. They don't realize that when they, when they come in there and they're trying to push their scam on me, uh, it's like, Hey, 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 I'm one of those people you're trying to take advantage of. Yeah. That yeah, ain't working exactly. here. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, now you talked a lot about, you know, or you mentioned the pH balance and we had talked a mm -hmm. lot about that, how important that is. And that's one of those things that when your kidneys start going bad, that can get, um, a bit out of sync and mm -hmm. that can lead to more issues. Um, mm -hmm. and it just kind of starts snowballing down from there. And I don't think a lot of people realize just how important your kidneys are at maintaining that pH balance. I recently yeah. got some new labs a, a week and a day ago, and I'll talk about those in a future video very soon, guys. Um, but my my acid is not where it needs to be, and my doctor's like, okay, that's the next thing. We got to get on top of that. It's number one. Yeah, yeah. Because it is, it's the path to worse kidney function. Um, mm -hmm. And it's one of those things that you're like, oh, wow, I didn't realize, or I knew my kidneys did that. I just hadn't had labs in a while. So I didn't know how far off I had gotten in mm -hmm. maintaining that balance. Yeah, it, it is a really, it's a really important function and people tend to take it for granted, not realizing that our body is really working all the time. Just like the filtering, our, our kidneys and our lungs are working to keep our acid base balance in line. So if we, and we've talked, like you said, we talked a lot about this uh, last week when we talked about Prowl, that potential renal acid load. So with kidney disease, the body will tend to gravitate towards that more acidic state. That is, that is part of the disease progression where your bicarbonate, your serum bicarbonate in your labs, that may start to drop. So typically we're looking at 22 to 29, but many people as their kidney disease progresses, will it'll go from 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, and it drops. And once it gets into that lower range, once it gets under 22, that's when you are at risk for metabolic acidosis. And this is, as we talked about, just not a good thing. This is something that can go from bad to worse really quick. So you get medication that can be prescribed. But as we talked about, there's a lot of diet changes that we can look at making to prevent that. But in the meantime, we're looking at just acknowledging and understanding that the kidneys are working to prevent that acid from overtaking. It's going to be working along with the lungs to help balance out how much of this carbon dioxide is in our system. And if it becomes imbalanced, the kidneys will help regulate how much hydrogen we keep. The lungs will tell us if we need to get rid of more carbon dioxide by breathing more. So uh, some people, when they experience this problem, their body is working to compensate by breathing heavier, bigger breaths to help get rid of more carbon dioxide. So this is a really, really important balance that you may or may not realize is going on in your body. But when you're looking at your labs and when you're talking with your doctor, with your dietitian about this, understanding where you're at in that acid base balance is going to be a really big indicator for your kidney function. And this is something that happens to a lot of people with CKD. This is not a special or unique situation. This is very common. Yeah, especially at that lower levels of kidney function uh, when you're around stage five. And this is where one of the the magic fixes um, kind of gets uh, mm -hmm. a lot of push on the internet. Mm -hmm. So most of you out there have probably heard about taking baking soda. Don't do that. No. Nope. You've probably heard all these videos about, oh, take baking soda, blah, 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 it can help. So they they extrapolate some actual real data and make up that take baking soda 
um, fix or cure. Um, if your bicarbonate level in your body gets below 22, your pH starts getting off. And that could happen a mm -hmm. lot uh, when people have very low kidney function. And then mm -hmm. their doctor will prescribe sodium bicarbonate tablets, a certain amount right. of them, to be taken at a certain time of day. It's very important mm -hmm. when you take them. You can't be popping these and eating the meal. Um, mm -hmm. Their doctor will prescribe them to help get them back up to that 22 so they can balance. Whoops. <laughs> Hit my mic. So they can balance that pH to not do damage to their kidneys. If you don't need more bicarbonate and mm -hmm. you're start taking it, you're not helping yourself. You're throwing your no. pH the other direction. Right. So um, I don't want anyone to t have a takeaway of, oh, pH is important. I got to keep it balanced. I've heard about taking baking soda. No, no, no. If your bicarbonate gets too low, your doctor will prescribe tablets, not scoops of baking soda, because there's just tons of sodium and it's not measured. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so be careful for all the scams out there promoting that. Yeah, yeah. It is um, like half of your day's worth and one teaspoon of baking soda. <sighs> and the prescription amount would be upwards of six times or more of that. So again this is like we talked about like that whack-a-mole idea like what's the point of knocking down one if you see two or three more pop up over here like there is no point in taking care of that if you're just going to cause more problems so please do not take baking soda make sure that you discuss this ph balancing discuss your acid base balance with your doctor before you start jumping into any kind of self medication or self prescription of any kind because your doctor don't self-prescribe like, what are you doing <laughs> yeah yeah don't self-prescribe everyone yeah. talk to your healthcare team they'll tell you what you need that way you're not doing any additional damage mm -hmm. um, now the kidneys also play a role with our red blood cells a very important mm -hmm. role can you tell us more about that so the kidneys will help in formating or formulating the red blood cells. So it creates this hormone called ethropoietin or some medical terms, some people call it EPO for short. This is made in the kidneys and this is what helps create red blood cells. Now, red blood cells are the, it's almost like the public transportation system in our body. It is taking up and dropping off oxygen to organs. And we know that we need oxygen to survive. Our organs need oxygen to survive. So in kidney disease, this function of creating the hormone to help create red blood cells starts to decline. In late, very late stages of CKD and on dialysis, people will get what's called an EPO shot. And this is basically this uh, ethropoietin stimulating agent, an ESA, that is given via IV to help stimulate that red blood cell production. And they will look at your hemoglobin levels to titrate or to balance how much of the ESA, how much of the EPO you need based on your hemoglobin levels and your uh, blood count, your CBC. So that's something that will probably always change just because you're on one dose of EPO. If you ever start it, doesn't mean it'll always be that many times it's changed even from month to month. That was something in dialysis that we would have our nurses look at every single month and make adjustments based on the lab values. But it's really, really important to think about this because for kidney disease, one of the first noticeable signs that people report having is a decrease in energy, a really significant drop in energy. You just don't feel like you can do as much as you used to. And that could be a sign of anemia where you don't have enough oxygen. You don't have enough hemoglobin uh, taking the oxygen to your organs. And I tell a lot of my clients, you know, we're putting a lot of work into taking care of your kidneys and you want to pay attention to the anemia and you want to look and follow the doctor's orders. And we talk about some things where you can help support your hemoglobin levels through diet. But you want to do all this stuff because if your kidneys aren't getting oxygen, they're not going to be able to do even their primary job. So it's very important to pay attention to this and to monitor what's going on with your energy levels and with your anemia status. Yeah. And I'll tell you, I suffered from anemia in the beginning of all the symptoms I had, and I had all of them. 
that was by far the worst just because yeah. you can't take a nap and get over it. You blinking, standing up, walking across the room, all those are just so exhausting. So that's, mm -hmm. you know, the hemoglobins, the red blood cells, that is critical for all your organs in your body. Mm -hmm. What about bone health? This is, I mean, we can and will do more episodes that dive even more into bone health because there is so much here. The kidneys have a lot of responsibilities and kind of going back to that initial uh, function we talked about of filtering, they keep a lot of these minerals that our body uses, but then if we don't need that, it's getting rid of them. However, with that decline in filtering means an excess collection. So I'm talking about bone health specifically. Well, first of all, there is a calcium balance that our body is always working on and calcium in the body, it's stored in the bones. This is something that is always working. So our bones are like, I can associate it with construction in Phoenix or even construction in Tucson where I was basically raised. Uh, there's just always construction on the roads. It's never, ever gone. <laughs> That's so, Columbus, Ohio around here. Yeah, It's I guess all it's orange barrels. Much, yeah. It's pretty much most everywhere. Um, but basically that construction site that you always drive by, you're like, they're never going to finish that project. That's bones. That's our bone health. Our bones are always changing. And we think of bones as this solid structure that's done and, you know, it, it's built and it's set and that's it. But actually what's happening is our bones are constantly turning over and refreshing with the whole system of it to keep our bones strong and healthy. Now with kidney disease, it throws a big wrench in this whole bone health plan. So first of all, the most common thing that people think of, at least in my mind, is the phosphorus imbalance. And phosphorus can become quite a difficult thing for people with CKT, CKD to manage. So there is this issue with phosphorus. And we talk about focusing on the quality and where you're getting your phosphorus from in your diet. There's medications that will help control it because typically it will, it will climb up higher. And once the phosphorus is high, that's when the calcium can become imbalanced as well because it's trying to help in managing that phosphorus. And then another part of this bone health situation, especially related to the kidneys, is vitamin D, which we've talked about before. Mm -hmm. Vitamin D is something that we get from the sun, but it's not, we don't get it in a nice pretty package. It has to go through this processing in the body, which includes being activated by the kidneys. And if the kidneys aren't functioning, it's not going to be able to convert this vitamin D into the hormone that it's supposed to be to do a lot of things in the body. So there's a, in the blog that I have up that we're reviewing tonight, I did include a link to a, a pretty cool video about bones and, and the vitamin process and everything. Um, but it, it's pretty interesting to just kind of learn more about because it's so, so intricate. But basically, this is where we get into with kidney disease. Many people require a supplement of vitamin D. Even without kidney disease, most people do need some more vitamin D, whether it's coming from the sun or coming from a supplement. There are some plant sources of vitamin D. There are animal sources of vitamin D. And there are different types, D2 and D3. Studies have shown that D3 is a better absorbed and better quality vitamin D that helps our vitamin D levels in the body. And that's something to pay attention to when it comes to that conversation you have with your doctor about a vitamin D supplement, making sure it's the right kind, making sure it's the right dose. And most importantly, I always have to reiterate this to my clients, to everybody, make sure you get on a schedule with your doctor about when your vitamin D is tested. Anytime you're on a supplement, you want to get those values tested routinely to make sure you're on the right amount. So if you're on a vitamin D supplement, number one, make sure it's been cleared, approved by your doctor. Number two, get on a supplement or not, I'm sorry, get on a uh, tracking schedule with your physician to make sure that it's being monitored. Um, and then lastly, just really quick about vitamin D is it's studies have shown that it's most beneficial when you have vitamin K2 that's also accompanying that vitamin D3. The K2 basically helps tell 
the body where to put the calcium that it's absorbing. So that's something else that's very important to pay attention to with going back to this bone health. And um, again, this is a really, really big topic and I'm just trying to skim like the big picture of it. Um, but that is part of why it's so important. And when kidneys fail, all of this starts to shut down and these imbalances kind of start to creep up. Yep. And there's a bit of conversation about vitamin D. Tammy in there or in the group mentioned that her D was 17, which is woo, extremely yeah. low. And her doctor put her on some vitamin D3 every day and she's getting some sunshine. Fantastic. My doctor wants me on, uh, wants my labs to be 80 to 100 for vitamin D and 80 is, is fairly high. Mm -hmm. uh, but there is some recent studies showing that a higher vitamin D around 80 may be beneficial for kidney patients. And I'm always pushing all my doctors, you know, what's the latest or I find something, I send it to them. You know? Yeah. Do we need yeah, to tweak yeah. anything? Look at this. Right. Right. My it's goal is no up. dialysis as long as possible. Yeah. yeah. And I will say that it's really important that we do point out for your vitamin D goal like that was something that your doctor has found to be valuable for you. Yes. For everybody else out there, you want to talk to your doctor about what your goal should be. It might be different. I have a client where that would be too much and it would imbalance what we've been working on. So we're talking about pulling back on the vitamin D supplement because we need to find the right balance and the right ratio. So it's really important. You don't just want to shoot for, um, don't shoot for what James is doing. Shoot for what yeah. you should be doing. That's so. my numbers. <laughs> get exactly. your targets, exactly. just like your food targets, get all those yes. from your healthcare professional because we all are different. And I right. cannot emphasize that enough. Right, right. All right, the okay. next thing. Yes. All right. This is probably, to me, this is the one thing that really pointed my kidneys were not doing too well was blood pressure. Before mm -hmm. I was diagnosed with serious kidney issues, my blood pressure got completely out of control, even on my blood pressure medication. My top number was over 200. My bottom number was where my top number should have been or actually even oh higher than that. Um. Yeah, it was, it was bad because the kidneys play a huge role in regulating your blood pressure. Can you talk a bit about that? Yeah, it is really fascinating how much the kidneys have a role in lowering and increasing blood pressure. Uh, there is a basically this whole kind of circular, this cycle, it's called the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. It's these different hormones, these different activators of the system that will help trigger either blood pressure to come up or come down. So one of the parts of this system is renin and renin is uh, an enzyme that is released from the kidneys. So this is something to increase blood pressure when it's too low or when it's coming down. So this is when the kidneys will essentially stop getting rid of fluids, it'll prevent sodium from being released. It'll pre So it'll basically build up that water volume to increase blood pressure. So with chronic kidney disease, this function becomes, uh, it becomes problematic essentially, especially when there is blood pressure issues. So many people with kidney disease will get something called an ACE inhibitor, which will help prevent part of the system um, and will and essentially keep blood pressure low. It'll prevent it from taking to increase the blood pressure. So that's the part that is revolved around the blood pressure. The other part is the hydration and the fluids. And that's when with kidney disease, being unable to get rid of the excess water, you might start to have a water collection. You might start to have that edema, which is basically extra water in your body that your body doesn't need and it shouldn't have because it can create more tension and more problems in the body. So there's medications that can help with taking care of this that basically help trigger and uh, help bring water through the system with the kidney function where it's at. And then there's also at times a fluid restriction that needs to come in place. So depending on where your kidney function's at, depending on how much the medication's helping. And then most importantly, uh, as James mentioned, you know, looking at blood pressure, looking at where your numbers are, how you feel, 
checking for those signs of edema, things that your doctor can help you in reviewing. That's where it becomes important in monitoring how your kidneys are doing when it comes to that blood pressure and hydration or fluid balance. Yep. And guess what? We made it through all of our talking points. Yay! We did it, you guys. We kept it under an hour for you. <laughs> yes, we were trying to go through all these. We were like, let's get on top of these really quick. Boom, boom, boom. Now, those of you on Facebook may have noticed something. One of the scammers, one of those scam cures tried to post in the Facebook group during mm -mm -mm. our live. <laughs> How dare they? How dare well, the sad they? news is it's a real person's account that probably they got the password and they're using it to post scams all over the place. Uh, but I was able to catch it and block it. Oh, <laughs> but it's like, well, good, oh, good. they're everywhere. Even during this, when we're talking about positive, helpful information, and we just moments after warning you guys about these scammers, mm -hmm. bam, there they are. I, yeah, it's like, it's like, oh, case in point. There, it's just, it's never ending, never, ever ending. Yeah. Um, so that kind of summarizes, you know, at, at a fairly high level, all the important things that your kidneys do for you. I mean, that is, you know, it's so much more than just making urine, um, mm -hmm. you know, and when they get damaged, all of these things are at risk. So that, like, like Jen said earlier, that's what we're protecting. Yeah. When we when we exercise, we eat better, we keep our blood sugar under control, we keep our blood pressure under control, when we're doing all those things, which sometimes are hard, it's it can mm -hmm. be difficult to give up some of those bad things, but this is what we're protecting. All of these things that we just talked about that your kidneys do. So yeah. I hope that for everyone out there, if there's ever that time and you're like, mmm, that slice of pizza looks good and a Dr. Pepper sure does sound delicious, think about what all you're then putting at risk. And right, pass on right. those things. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Think about all the stuff. Again, you know, the the my my goal, my hope in talking about this tonight was just to be a reminder for you of everything that your kidneys do and not just thinking about avoiding dialysis or not just thinking about, um, I don't want it to get worse. Think about what you get to keep. Think about what you get to do. You get to continue to have a good balance in your body. You get to continue to have the filtration that needs to be done. You get to go do things because you're letting your body take care of itself. And that's what we're focusing on is all the stuff that you get to do, all the stuff that you're working on to keep your kidneys functioning so that you can keep living life and you don't need to worry about uh, having complications and having problems that come from not taking care of it. Yep. All right. Thank you, Jen, again for a great show. And everybody, we tried our best to, to kind of shorten it um, as much as possible. Still, there's a lot of great information. And this is actually the last live video of this week. So I will wow. be back the next time is with you next week. I can't remember what our topic is. I haven't updated um, the website because that's April. I, I, it's somewhere. It's not in front of me, but it's somewhere. <laughs> I think, I, you know what I think, I think it's, it's about? Itching. Yeah, itching, itching and kidney disease. Yeah. We're going to talk about the causes. We're going to talk about what you want to pay attention to. We're going to talk about how to manage that and how to, really get it under control. So there's going to be diet stuff in there. There's going to be medicine. There's going to be a lot. It's a lot. This is going to be one of those episodes. It's going to be a lot. Yep. And if you guys want to learn more, plantpoweredkidneys.com. Jen has her blog. Just click on blog. You'll see a blog for what we talked about today. Blogs for all the past episodes. If you go to dadvicetv.com, the website, you can click on Jen under live shows, click Jen, see all of her shows, plus every other doctor, every other dietitian that's been on here, all their videos. And here's the coolest thing. If you go to dadvicetv.com, you can search and it only searches all of the videos on Dadvice TV. If you go to, to YouTube, you do a search, you're gonna get some of the scam ones saying, hey, yeah. here's a cure. Um, oh my goodness, I, I saw one. Do this for five minutes and cure kidney disease. 
Oh, if only it were whole, like that, right? It had a whole bunch of views. It's like, oh, that's oh. heartbreaking. And yeah. it, and I looked at it, and it was something harmful. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Mm -hmm. But you guys can go to dadvicetv.com, get all sorts of resources, go to the Plant Powered Kidneys Facebook group. Great support, great stuff there. Um, and Jen has a, an announcement coming very soon about her next group. <laughs> and um, those group sessions are awesome, especially for people who are, are new to, mm -hmm. to living with kidney disease and want to learn how to manage it and hopefully delay or prevent the need for dialysis. And in my opinion, it is never too early to start eating right because your health is really what you're protecting. It's, it's not just your kidneys, it's your entire health, your heart, everything else, and a dietitian can help you with that. All right, if I keep talking, we're gonna end up at an hour long. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you everybody, and Jen and I will see you next week in the next video. Bye everyone. Thank you.